Well, now that we've calibrated the ProNav system, I want to show you guys a few cool tips and tricks that you can do with it here in a fishing scenario. And what we're doing this morning is actually going along, working a little bit of shoreline here. And we're just going to be casting some crankbaits up in shallow, looking for smallmouth bass and uh, potentially some walleye here at first light. So one of the things that I like to use when I'm out here uh, casting shoreline and working structure is the routes feature. And actually what I'll do is create a route right along the bank here on on the drop off and that way I can cast up in and get my lure shallow and keep the boat out over some deeper water. So to do this I'm going to come into the ProNav app. I've got it connected up to my trolling motor right now and I'm going to hit the routes icon here to bring us into the live map view. So when I get into here basically I can zoom and pan and I've got my boat location marked by this green boat icon. And as you can see here, we're actually looking at a one-foot contour map. And this is the Navionics layer that's now integrated in the ProNav Angler app uh, in our iOS mobile application. So basically what we're looking at here is one-foot contours for this entire waterway, which is going to give us the ability to basically come in and create our routes right over top of this underwater topography. And this is great because as you can see, we've got a great big flat here and we've got a pretty steep drop off along the shoreline. And this is the type of area I'm looking to, to catch smallmouth bass this time of year. So to create a route, I'm going to hit the routes icon. And what it's going to do is put us into route creation mode. And now I can zoom in and I can see where my boat's at. And I can come in here and just literally start adding points. So one thing you'll notice if you've already used our app, the Navionics uh, route creation is a little bit different than doing it on the satellite view. So there haven't been any changes to the satellite view. However, with the Navionics layer, uh, we have a point selector here. And basically what you can do is toggle through the different points as you're creating them. And it's going to give you the option to select one. And once I select it, that's going to allow me to move it by pressing and holding on a new location on the map screen. So it's a little different than our current uh, satellite view where you can grab and drag a point. And eventually this iOS version uh, with the Navionics maps here will function similar to our satellite layer. However, for the time being, we'll use the point selector to basically select a point. You can delete it or by clicking a new location on the map, you can simply move it. Another thing to note is that when you're creating a route here, you can just easily jump between all the different mapping layers. So if I want to come into the layers icon here and just quickly view a satellite layer, I hit satellite and now I can basically see an overlay of the same route I created in real time and the satellite imagery based on where my boat's at. So I can also add points right off of the satellite imagery and then toggle back and forth into the Navionics. And as I mentioned, you know, with the satellite imagery, all you need to do is select a point by grabbing it and you can drag and move it. So some folks probably find this a little bit easier than the point selector. And eventually you'll see that the Navionics layer will have something similar. So I'm going to move up here and select this point I just created. And now I'm going to drag, well, I'm not going to drag here in Navionics. I'm just going to select that point and click on a location on the map where I want it to go. And I can fine tune these points by doing so. So now that I've got my points here along the shoreline and I've got my boat sort of at a reasonable distance so I can cast and get right up into the shore, I'm just gonna hit go and select my end point. When I get to the end, I'm just gonna have it anchor us. So now the ProNav Angler is going to control the trolling motor here automatically. As you can see, we're starting to move in to the first point on that route. And this is going to automatically follow from point to point for us. So what that's going to let me do is jump up in the front of the boat and start fishing. When we get to the end, I'm going to know because the boat's going to anchor. And at that point, I can run that route back in reverse. Or I can take off and hit a different spot. From here, I can also set a speed or a thrust. So in this case, I can set my thrust to, let's say, 50%. And now that's going to get my speed down so that we're covering the shoreline somewhat slow, but keeping the boat moving forward all the while. Another thing I can do here is use the speed control. So if I just want to cover the shoreline at roughly 1 mile per hour, I can come in here and set the speed to 1.0 miles per hour, hit done. 
and now this trolling motor is going to do all the thrust adjustments to keep the boat moving at that speed. And a lot of times when I'm working a shoreline, I'm really just going to use a constant thrust. And all that does is it just keeps the boat moving at a real steady and consistent pull. Uh, the speed control is great if you're out trolling and trying to keep some crankbaits or lures working at a certain speed. But following the shoreline here really doesn't matter much to me exactly how fast we're going. More so, I just want to make sure that that boat is kind of maintaining that course. And if we had a good wind right now, we'd want to use a little bit more thrust just to hold that boat at a constant, you know, kind of a constant thrust moving into the wind. Or if we're fishing in the river, you know, you've got current there. So sometimes you want to use a little bit more thrust just to kind of combat the forces here. But today we've got a calm morning and of course it's just running right through these points with no problem. So we're just about to the first point here in the route where we'll start fishing. So now that we're on our route, I think I'm going to jump up to the front and start making a few casts. As you can imagine, if you're out fishing by yourself, this is incredibly handy. Basically, I've got the boat working right along the shoreline here, and I don't have to touch anything. So if I hook a fish, I can grab my net, I can get that fish in the boat. You know, if I get a snag, I can hit the foot pedal and take myself up in there and get it unsnagged. You know, it just makes fishing by yourself or with kids or someone that may not be experienced at driving the boat super easy. And basically what this does is ensures that nobody is stuck on the steering wheel the entire time or the foot pedal driving this boat because it's driving itself. So if I notice that I'm moving a little bit fast, all I have to do is come back here and adjust the thrust. And I'm actually going to do that. You know, I'm just kind of watching my speed as I'm progressing along the shoreline here. And I'm just going to drag our thrust slider down maybe another 10%. And that way it's going to give me a little more time to make my cast and cover the shoreline the way I want to.
And just that little adjustment seems to have kind of gotten us right where we want to be here speed wise. So right now, you know, in the 17 foot boat, I've got a 70 pound thrust motor on it, which is a little bit larger than what I really need to move this boat around. But I do like having 24 volt systems so that you've got a little bit more battery life to kind of last you for a day. And uh, sometimes even a long weekend, you know, if you're taking the boat out, uh, you know, to the cabin and whatnot, and you don't have a good charging system. Basically having that extra thrust and that extra voltage is going to let you run that boat a little bit longer. So, you know, with this specific boat, I find that running around 40% thrust in a calm condition is going to keep this boat moving right along the shoreline here at about a half mile an hour, which is honestly quite perfect for, you know, pitching some crankbaits, covering some water. And we're just looking for bass and walleye that might be up in here tucked close to shore early in the day right now. And, uh, you know, if we were actually going to come back here later, we could run the same route when these fish come off the bank a little bit, and we could run the same route trolling at, you know, a little more faster speed, maybe a mile an hour, mile and a half, and we could come back along this drop and do the exact same pass that we're doing right now um, trolling. So there's a lot of versatility here in how you can use the ProNav Angler. You can create these routes, you can save them, and you can come back and run them over and over. So once I've saved this route, and I found out all the points were good. I didn't get into any shallow water that I didn't want to be in. Uh, I didn't get out too far away from shore. And I can use this route infinitely, which is awesome. You know, the work is done now. I've got all the, all the waypoints figured out. And assuming we catch fish, this will be one we come back and run. All right, so it looks like we just hit the last point here in the route, and what this motor is going to do is take us into anchor. And basically, at this point, you know, I can either repark the boat or get us on a different route. I can run it back in reverse right through that same stretch, or, you know, in this case, I'm going to move us down the canal and we're going to try another spot.